Okay, so in this video, we're going to find a flow line for a vector field in two dimensions. A flow line is sometimes called a, a integral curve. So let's start with that. So, so we have a vector field. For me, a vector field is any function, in this case, from R2 to R2. And we think of it like uh, this side, the inputs of the functions, we think of them as points in R2. And then the outside, the outputs on this side, the, the, the output of this, we think of it like a vector anchored at that point. So this looks like a bunch of vectors at, at every point in R2. So the the input gives you at which point you're drawing the vector, and the output gives you what vector you draw at each point. So the effect of these things is to have, I have a silly example over here, um, not there, and here. So I did this in Desmos, uh, I'm just using some of these, vector field generator. So this is a very simple, the, the, the example in Desmos is um, f of x, y equals x, comma, y. So it's, it's your, when you draw vector fields, you have to scale them back. If not, you don't see much. But you can see that at each point, if I see here, what's happening is that at each point, uh, if this is the point I'm thinking about, then I'm thinking that it's this, vector is the same as the input, but I think out now that is a vector anchored here. Oops, I didn't carry that. Let me grab the whole thing. There you go. So you think of the vector right there. So for any point that you, you start here, uh, that's the x, y as a point. Then the output, you think of it as a vector. And you grab that vector and you put it right there. Yeah. Um, so it just becomes the same as the input. So of course the formula could be more complicated and can, things get very complicated very easily. So just to show an example, this is um, x comma y. But if I change that to x plus y comma y, now it looks a little bit more interesting. Okay, so these arrows, uh, the density of these arrows are something here, so let me move them like that to have an idea of what's happening. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to do simple vector fields. We're not going to bother in doing things very complicated. Okay, so that's what a vector field is. And now what am I trying to do? I'm trying to find a flow line. And the flow line is a curve that follows kind of these arrows that we saw. We saw that um, the picture, uh, if you look at these, it looks like we have to, that we naturally we want these curves to go uh, and follow those arrows of the curve of the vector field. And that's kind of going to, that's going to be called an, int an integral curve or a flow line. So the property of a flow line is that um, we're looking for a curve um, gamma, so I call it from I to R2 with the derivative at each point to be the same as a vector field at each point. I'm gonna write like that. Gamma prime equals F gamma. So this is the, the example I'm trying here, the vector field is constant. So that's not gonna be a mystery. I mean, we should really know what we should get. We're gonna get something like, um, let me go back. So my vector field here is just a two comma three. So if I put here a constant two and a three there, uh, I get all these arrows in the same direction. So these are going to be lines, right? So I'm just going to find a line. It's a very simple way. Uh, it's a very simple example, but I want to do that example to illustrate the, the method. So what I'm going to do is I want so if um, so if the gamma I'm looking for, you got like x of t comma y of t, then what we want, we need that gamma prime of t equals f of gamma. But if gamma is just, is constant, it's a 2, 3. So it has to be the 2, 3, but in the other hand, it has to be x prime of t, y prime, right? So we have, we're always going to have these uh, a little system of differential equations. 
and um, I'm going to put this on the corner. So I'm looking for, so what I'm looking for is um, we need to solve a system um, x prime of t equals 2 and y prime of t equals 3. So this is a very simple uh, differential equation. It's one of them. I'm going to write them. I mean, you can just say right away it's 2t, but in case you want to follow how we do these in the differential equation class, we will write it like this. It's a simple it's, um, separation of the variables, so you, you kind of write dx equals 2dt, uh, and then you integrate both sides. And yes, like, as you thought, of course, it's very simple. This becomes uh, x equals 2t plus a constant, right? If I do the same thing on this side, I'll get y equals 3t plus a constant, okay? So I got that. I'm almost done. The only thing that is missing is I need to um, find a consistent iteration, right? Because uh, gamma zero, want, we want it to be the, the one zero. So uh, finally, since we want um, gamma of zero to be the one zero, then we're thinking that um, x, let me put this x of zero is uh, c1, so c1 must be one, right? And y of zero, when I'm plugging it in here, so zero plus c2, so that should be a zero. So my gamma of t that I was looking for is, yeah, two t plus one comma three t. So a very simple uh, problem. Now let's do, uh, repeat this process with another example. It's not terribly more complicated, but it's not linear. It's not, it's not constant anymore. So it's still going to be um, doable with, with, with basic techniques of solving differential equations. So I have, I'm going to have now, I still want the gamma of t to be uh, x comma y of t. And we want, uh, we're looking for one where gamma prime of t is f. So this means that uh, gamma t is x prime, y prime of t has to be negative two x comma negative y. This gives us that uh, x prime is negative two x and uh, y prime equals negative y. Again, if I write this carefully, uh, this becomes uh, dx et equals negative 2x. So using the technique of separation of variables means to move the x's to one side and the t's to the other. So if I do that, I'm going to have uh, 1 over x dx on this side. I'm going to have negative 2 dt on that side. So now when you integrate this side respect to x and this side respect to t, you end up having the natural log of x, the absolute value equals um, negative two t plus a constant. So now to solve for x, I take the exponential of both sides. So x will be e to negative two t plus, uh, I'll sorry, put a c1 for this, for this variable, for this constant, sorry, t plus c1. But then rewrite this like, uh, let me continue over here, like e to the negative 2t times e to the c1. So we call that sometimes a k e to the negative 2t. Okay. This is how I would solve this. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to repeat the steps for the y, but it's, it's similar. So let's put this right here. Maybe, oh, I'll add it maybe make this one also straight, this one, to have more space. Okay, so now, uh, if I repeated this with the y, um, so this is part of the x, so let me add this guy, put it over here. So if I repeated the steps with the y, of course I would get that the y of t 
would be a different constant times e to the negative t, right? Not not to negative two t, but e to the negative t. So this is my uh, y of t after doing some work that I skipped, but it's similar to the x part. Okay, and now we're done. Um, I'm just have to find the initial values, and now gamma of t is uh, k1 e to the negative 2t comma k2 e to the negative t, and we want gamma of 0 to be the 1, 2. So when you plug in 0 into the t's, e to the 0 is 1, so you need k1 comma uh, this should be a k2, I guess. Uh, k1 comma k2 should be 1 comma 2. So we get that my curve I was looking for is k1 e to the negative 2t comma, sorry, I found the value of k1, what am I using? k1 was 1 and k2 is 2 to negative t. Okay, this would be solving uh, finding a, a simple uh, integral curve or or line flow line. So just for curiosity, let's look what the graph of this vector field looks like. Just since we had um, the Desmos map here, so this vector field was negative two x. So let me put here. Oops, uh, negative two x, comma negative y negative two x comma sorry again tangent to comma negative y okay so and I'm looking at the point one two so if you look at this uh these are these curves negative two x comma negative y they're coming towards inside with uh towards the origin with a little bit of a curve here um and they're going towards it. Look like they're going towards the origin, right? So uh, at the one two, uh, there's many curves. I've got another one that goes through at zero. That's at the one two. I can't draw here. I can start at the bit of a field, but you can hope you see the curve at the one two. There's going to be a curve that follows those arrows and goes towards the origin. That's the curve we found. Okay. The one that has these arrows as its derivatives. Okay, so. Here are my simple examples of finding flow lines.